Good day. I am Dr. Daniela Stein, and I'm very excited to be reviewing the role of holistic medicine in sexual health. I'm a family physician. About 40% of patients report having a sexual health concern during their lifetime. When a patient presents to you as a healthcare provider with their most intimate concerns, it's such a privilege to be able to journey with the patient, to try to establish the root cause and to treat that. This is an area where we can significantly improve the quality of our patient's lives. In my practice, I often find that it's the last thing, just as the patient leaves the, the room, that a patient might turn around and say, oh, doc, may I have a quick prescription for Viagra? This is after I filled their diabetes, peripheral vascular disease, heart disease medication. And I, I always turn around and say, no, no, this is not a quick prescription. This is a big deal. In order for me to establish the root cause of that sexual concern, I need proper time. I need a, a full consult, you know, one need at least an hour time we might need to do a full physical exam, review all the medication, side effects of medication that the patient is on, lifestyle factors. But then once we've established the root cause, dealt with it, treated it, we can turn this patient's life around completely. And that is so rewarding and to the patient, there is incredible improvement in their quality of life. And that's my goal for today, is to give you an approach and an overview on how to approach a patient who presents with a sexual health concern. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm Dr. Daniela Stein. I obtained my medical degree at the University of Pretoria. I completed my LMCC as well as my CCFB certification as a family physician in Canada. I've been practicing family medicine for 15 years in Canada, providing comprehensive family medicine, including delivering babies, caring for children, teens, for patients with mental health concerns, adults, geriatric patients, marginalized communities, people with addiction problems. I care for patients in clinic as well as patients admitted to hospital. I've done further training in functional medicine at the Institute of Functional Medicine as well as integrative health at the University of Arizona. I'm also an associate clinical professor at McMaster University in Canada. I am very excited to be reviewing the role of holistic medicine in sexual health. Sexual health and vitality go hand in hand. Acute illness or chronic medical conditions, mental health, poor nutrition can all cause decreased libido and decreased sexual satisfaction. When a patient presents with sexual health related concerns, the healthcare provider must address the whole person. Addressing general wellness, focusing on physical well being, nutrition, exercise, and herbal therapy all play a role in sexual health. We should not rely solely on a single area of focus. Healthcare providers should consider lifestyle advice before we just prescribe a pharmaceutical. The most common sexual questions and concerns from patients presented to primary care providers 
consists of two broad categories. Firstly, concerns regarding sexual drive, desire, libido, the ability and satisfaction. And then secondly, fertility concerns. So after a very good thorough history, we sometimes need to do a physical exam or some sort of testing. For example, if a patient has dyspareunia, that's painful vaginal intercourse, addressing this, um, we, should, we should first rule out infection because if this patient does maybe have bacterial vaginosis or chlamydia or gonorrhea, we need to treat that way before we, we give out aphrodisiacs. Or atrophic vaginitis is a very common, a typical postmenopausal concern for which there are natural remedies to alleviate the symptoms. And erectile dysfunction incidents increase along with increase in cardiovascular and metabolic chronic disease. So addressing the vascular insufficiency you know, would be the root cause, or if it's substance use or addressing hormonal imbalances, all of these play a role in alleviating the condition. So firstly, discussing um, sexual drive, desire, libido, ability, and satisfaction. The one intervention that has been shown to make the biggest impact is exercise. Exercise improves sexual desire, arousal, and satisfaction in individuals. And exercise benefits are multifactorial. Increased physiological sexual arousal occurs immediately after exercise due to increased sympathetic nervous system activity and endocrine factors. Regular exercise further enhances sexual satisfaction by preserving autonomic flexibility, which improves cardiovascular health and a proven benefit to an individual's move, mood. So regular exercise further increases positive body image, which further increases sexual well-being. During physical or emotional, real or perceived stress, the sympathetic nervous system becomes more active and an overactive parasympathetic nervous system suppress sexual drive and desire. Physical activity and general physical fitness reduce the activity in the parasympathetic nervous system. Exercise interventions have also been shown to be specifically beneficial in a study of women with antidepressant induced sexual dysfunction. Another study showed exercise benefits specifically for women who have undergone hysterectomies. The treatment we prescribe for an enlarged prostate often results in erectile dysfunction. You know, that's why getting that, that full history is so important before we just dive in and prescribe medication. So it is important to make your patient aware of this before you prescribe any medication that can alter their sexual ability or sexual function or libido. But quite often, benign prostate hypertrophy and erectile dysfunction, which, which are two completely separate issues, they quite often coexist in the aging male population. Italian researchers have found that when men who were more physically active either from recreational exercise or strenuous occupations, such as farmers or construction workers, they had a 40% uh, less likely to develop benign prostate hyperplasia than men with desk jobs. And then men who engage in more than five hours of exercise a week were 50% less likely to develop benign prostate hyperplasia than men who exercise less than two hours a week. So men who had the highest level of both occupational and recreational physical activity were 60% less likely 
to develop an enlarged prostate. Erectile dysfunction and cardiovascular health goes hand in hand. High blood pressure, high blood sugar, high cholesterol, and high triglycerides all damage arteries in the heart. So uh, arteries all over your body. If, if the damage is in your heart, then you get a heart attack. Or in the brain, that's when you get a stroke. Or when it's affecting the penis, then you have erectile dysfunction. But it's the same vascular disease, the same buildup of atherosclerosis that you get all throughout the body. So once we've established that a patient experiences erectile dysfunction due to vascular insufficiency, this can be treated in the same way that other cardiovascular illness is treated. And our mainstay of treatment for cardiovascular illness, peripheral vascular disease, is physical exercise. We treat it with exercise, diet, and weight loss. Physical activity, walking 30 minutes a day, has shown a 40% decrease in erectile dysfunction. And then with moderate exercise, there is even more benefit. And this should always be combined. So that's why this whole holistic approach is so important to me. It, we didn't only look at the exercise. It should be combined with eating a diet rich in natural foods, such as fruit, vegetables, whole grains, fish, and less processed foods. So processed foods are food the way we don't see it on a farm. That would be things like bread or pasta or processed meats. All of these types of foods that comes out of a box should be avoided. An increase in waistline also leads to an increase in the incidence of erectile dysfunction. So a man with a 170 centimeter waistline, that's a 42 inch waistline, is 50% more likely to have erectile dysfunction than a man with an 80 centimeter, that's 32 inch waistline. Being overweight causes erectile dysfunction through several different mechanisms. It causes erectile dysfunction due to the increased risk of vascular disease, as well as increased risk of diabetes. And then it also disrupts your normal hormonal cycle. In excess fat in a patient, more hormone precursors are converted into estrogen. That is why we often see in our male patients gynecomastia, that is enlargement of their breasts. It's because of this conversion of testosterone into estrogen in peripheral fat. So this elevated estrogen level in men, in turn, suppress testosterone levels. Next topic, we often, um, patients often present to us about is fertility concerns. Same thing with fertility. We have to really, before we just start treating or prescribing aphrodisiacs, we must first really establish the root cause, the root concern, look at this patient in a holistic way. In addressing fertility, we always address both partners. Obesity is a significant cause of decreased sperm count, hormonal imbalance, and erectile dysfunction due to disrupted hormonal health. Nutrition is paramount for sperm production and reproduction. According to a study done in Canada and the United States, it was found that obese women, this is women with a body mass index of more than 27, had a relative risk of ovulatory infertility of three compared with women with a normal body mass index. And a normal body mass index is a BMI of 20 to 24.9. And there is also an increased risk, but less severe, of ovulatory infertility in moderately overweight and underweight women. And I found that patients are quite often not aware that their weight, them being overweight or underweight, can be a cause of their infertility. 
A sedentary lifestyle does lead to lower sperm production and decreased fertility in men. One specific study looked at a population of healthy men who participated in exercise compared to a similar group of healthy men who did not participate in exercise, and then they measured their sperm quality. The group who participated in moderate to vigorous physical activity had a significant higher total sperm count and sperm concentration than those who were less active and watching more TV. The next thing we address with our patients is their mental health. This is a key component when addressing sexual vitality. Stress has a detrimental effect on an individual sex life. This is due to multiple factors. When we react to stress, even when the stress is psychological, our body goes through physical changes. It's called our fight or flight response. This response causes an increase in heart rate, an increase in our blood pressure, an increase in our breathing, and it diminishes other functions such as our sex drive. When people experience chronic stress, this chronically elevated blood pressure and heart rate lead to cardiovascular disease. And we've just discussed how cardiovascular disease impairs sexual function. Furthermore, the stress response causes the release of cortisol and epinephrine. These hormones suppress your sex drive. During chronic stress, when cortisol and epinephrine gets depleted, the body uses steroid hormone precursors to make more cortisol rather than testosterone, which is needed for your sexual drive. And we need testosterone both male and female or non-binary genders do need testosterone for sex drive. Cortisol itself disrupts the body's ability to make estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Without these hormones, women may experience irregular menstrual cycles, men experience erectile dysfunction, and a loss of libido. In addition to the physiological effects of stress, there is a psychological aspect to sex as well. Stress impacts mood at the moment, and it also diminishes sexual drive. Chronic stress may lead to depression and anxiety, which diminish sexual drive and satisfaction. And depression and anxiety can also lead to neglect of self-care, which further impairs vitality. A very important thing to address with your patient is relationship stress. Relationship stress and conflicts within a relationship affects libido more than other types of stress. This has been found to be the case irrespective of gender. Individuals also report that their partner's satisfaction impacts their own libido. So a lack of interest from one partner can lead to a lack of interest for both partners. As a healthcare provider, it is important to inquire about the relationship concerns and explain to your patient the relationship between psychological and physiological behavior before you prescribe medication. I've, I've had patients who would present for a testosterone prescription. And then after a thorough history, doing blood work, normal testosterone levels, when I delve a bit deeper into the relationship, I've honestly found that some couples, for some couples, marriage counseling work much better than Viagra or, or hormone replacement therapy. The stress management techniques that have been shown to be helpful for sexual vitality include mindfulness, breathing exercises, general exercise, as we've discussed in the previous slide, and gratitude journaling, and an increased sense of connection 
and community. A very, very big topic in addressing sexual vitality is nutrition. Sugar is detrimental to sexual function in both men and women. Sugar causes atherosclerosis, which restricts blood flow to the sexual organs. Sugar also causes diabetes, which leads to erectile dysfunction and neuropathy. Sugar creates advanced glycation end products, which are known to destroy the collagen matrix in skin and soft tissue. Foods that are good for vitality and cardiovascular health are also good for sexual health. First on the list is high quality fats like omega-3 fatty acids. These healthy fats are anti-inflammatory. It reduces atherosclerosis. It maintains healthy blood flow to the sex organs. Good fats are the building blocks for cholesterol, which are used as a building block to synthesize sex hormones such as testosterone and estrogen. So testosterone and estrogen is being built and synthesized in your body. And, and you need food for everything that you make for your hormones and everything else. So it's always important to be cognizant of what you eat and to think whatever you're putting in your mouth, do you want this thing to become part of you, to, to feed your muscles, to, to feed your hormones? Nitric oxide is essential in obtaining an erection. So sildenafil, it's also known as Viagra, a widely available treatment for erectile dysfunction, is a specific phosphodiesterase type 5 inhibitor that enhances nitric oxide mediated vasodilatation in the corpus cavernosum of the penis by inhibiting cyclic guanosine monophosphate breakdown. So what this means is you have nitric oxide in your body all the time. Then you also have an enzyme that breaks it down. This medication stops the breakdown. So your natural nitric oxide, if you have it in your body, stays around longer. Nitric oxide causes your blood vessels to dilate. So it's very good for cardiovascular health. It lowers your blood pressure. And that vasodilatation um, causes a rush of blood which enables an erection. It um, helps with clitoral engorgement and vaginal lubrication. With aging, the body makes less nitric oxide, which is further reduced with atherosclerosis. So as atherosclerosis increases, nitric oxide decreases, blood pressure increases, sexual dysfunction increases. However, there are foods that are high in nitrates, and these nitrates convert in the body to nitric oxide. These foods include leaf, includes leafy greens, like rocket, bok choy, cabbage, spinach, carrots, beets, and celery. And then there are supplements available, such as L-arginine, and L-citrulline, which are precursors for nitric oxide and might further improve vasodilation and sexual well-being. Pomegranate juice protects nitric oxide from oxidation while enhancing its biological activity. The metabolic activity of commensal bacteria in the gastrointestinal tract and probiotic bacteria also provide nitric oxide from nitrate, nitrite and nitrate, both of them. Then food time antioxidants are beneficial because they decrease inflammation. Ongoing inflammation causes atherosclerosis and chronic disease. Foods well studied for their anti-inflammatory properties are foods rich in vitamin C, vitamin D, and vitamin E. Vitamin D synthesis takes place in the skin after exposure to the sun. 
vitamin D is necessary for the production of estrogen and testosterone, our sex hormones. These hormones are essential to keep libido high and keep sexual organs functioning optimally. Selenium and zinc are trace minerals that improve sexual vitality. In my practice, I'm starting to taste more of these trace minerals. I used to believe if people eat a well-balanced diet, they will, it's unlikely for them to develop trace mineral deficiencies. But unfortunately, due to mineral depletion in our soil, even well-intended individuals who eat a healthy organic diet may still develop some mineral deficiencies. Other foods that increase sexual vitality and vigor include artichokes, asparagus, chocolate, figs, oysters, spicy chili peppers, strawberries, watermelon, and pistachio nuts. Maca is a sweet root vegetable. Its nickname is Peruvian Viagra. Maca is commonly available as a powder that can be added to a smoothie. And it's an excellent, excellent aphrodisiac. Another thing you have to address with your patient is lifestyle. The most significant causes of erectile dysfunction is cigarette smoking and excessive alcohol use. So let's discuss hormones. Multiple hormones does play a role in sexual health. Hormone, human growth hormone is an anabolic hormone vital for sexual health. Human growth hormone and testosterone are both made primarily at night. So something you can do to help your patient is to help them improve the quality and quantity of their sleep, as this is essential for adequate sex hormone secretion. Lack of sleep increases cortisol, and which we discussed in the previous slide, how cortisol impairs sexual function. Environmental toxins can disrupt your body's natural ability to make hormones. We call these endocrine disruptors. The most well-studied ones are parabens, they have estrogen mimicking properties. Parabens are associated with an increased risk of breast cancer. Phthalates are associated with congenital reproductive disabilities in males. Benzophenone is a chemical found in sunscreens that disrupt natural hormones. So once a healthcare provider has addressed all lifestyle issues, optimized nutrition, there are so many botanicals that can be used. Botanicals play a role in sexual desire and fertility. Commercially available FDA approved and traditionally used botanicals such as ginseng or tribalis or maca, yuhimbi, jingjo, biloba or ashwagandha can really improve your patient's outcomes. So when we look at aphrodisiacs, we divide it according to the mechanism of action into two broad categories, depending whether the mechanism is psychological or physiological. Natural aphrodisiacs do not ensure safety. So it's important to, to understand the concept that natural is not always safe. Examples of unsafe natural aphrodisiacs include ecstasy or methamphetamines. Aphrodisiacs that contain hallucinogenic properties like bufo toad. It is bufotenin that is found in the skin and the glands of bufo toads, frogs. They have a psychological effect on a person that can increase sexual desire and pleasure. Aphrodisiacs that contain smooth muscle relaxing properties like euhimbine have a physiological effect that can affect hormone levels, and it also increases blood flow to the male and female genitals. 
Yoimbin is a substance found in the bark of Yoim trees in West Africa. It was traditionally used in West African cultures in which the bark would be boiled and the resulting water drunk until its effect showed proven benefits in increasing sexual desire. It is now approved by the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, and it can be prescribed for sexual health in the United States and in Canada. The chemical structure of Uhimbine is an indole alkaloid that contains an adrenergic receptor blocker. The blocker affects the central nervous system, the autonomic nervous system and penile tissue and vascular smooth muscle cells that help men with physiological issues treat psychogenic dysfunction. Side effects can include nausea or anxiety or irregular heartbeats, palpitations or restlessness. Another widely used aphrodisiac is horny goat wheat. It was traditionally used in Chinese folk medicine. It contains irserin. It's a flavonoid glycoside that improves hormone regulation. Ginseng, especially rare ginseng, is more effective than placebo at improving erectile dysfunction. And it also uh, improves sexual arousal after menopause. Fenugreek is popular in Ayurvedic medicine as an anti-inflammatory as well as a libido boosting treatment. Jingo biloba is derived from one of the oldest species of trees, the Jingo biloba tree. It acts as an aphrodisiac by helping relax blood vessels and increase blood flow. Thank you for your time. I hope you've gained a new perspective and some insight that will increase your patient's health and quality of life. Take care.